Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, a TV show. I uh, want to thank our sponsor who helped make the show happen, Bank Hometown. Uh, and we'll jump right into our second segment. It's great to, to be here with a, an old friend and colleague, Dr. Juan Gomez, who's the president and CEO of Centro. Juan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had a chance to catch yeah. up a little bit over the last, uh, last few months and yeah. uh, you know, wanted to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about the great work that Centro is doing on a variety of fronts and then mm -hmm. also talk about a great annual event that takes place here in the city of Worcester, which celebrates our our Latino culture and all of its forms and its diversity in and of itself. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, welcome and, and why don't you, you tell our viewers a little bit about the history, which we were yeah. talking about, and, and the mission of Centro. So Centro is no longer your grandfather's old Centro. Um, back when it was started, it was Centro Las Americas. It was actually Casa Cultural Dominicana, then it became Centro Las Americas. And it was started to serve the Puerto Rican community at the time in the city of Worcester. There was another organization, and we referenced that in our conversation, called ALPA, uh, which was more uh, diverse. But Centro was focused to ser on serving the Puerto Rican community as ALPA goes out of the business and uh, and the Latino community becomes more diverse in Worcester than Centro expanded its mission. And let's take, mission. It, just take a little minute yep. just, you know, on that history, right? I mean, yep. um, it was post-World War II that Worcester really started to see its first influx of, of Latinos, most of them being Puerto Rican, correct? That's right. It was actually in the 50s, we had a few families, but then in the 60s, we had a greater number. In the 70s, there was a large wave of Puerto Ricans coming from Puerto Rico and New York. Um, then in the 80s, we had other waves from uh, New York, Lawrence, Providence, Rhode right. Island, people were coming, the Dominican Republic, and then the El, Salvador, El Salvador, Cuba, this, yep, yep, yep. yep, and all, all of that stuff. So as, as the, the, the world turned, if you will, um, uh, and, and there were changes, whether it was geographic uh, or, 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 or natural disasters in different economic countries, economics, war, yep. war all of those things contributed to the growth and the diversity of the Latino community in Worcester. And so Centro, you know, expanded its mission to serve all of them. Right. And, and now, beyond that, we serve people from Central and South America and the Caribbean, but we also serve people from Southeast Asia, a number of countries from the African continent, the Middle East, uh, Eastern Europe, so we've, we've become pretty diverse. So while historically focused on the Latino community and, and the growing diversity, and still a, a focus, uh, really yeah. a full, f full service, social service a agency, but also, you know, one of the things that, that you've always uh, been focused on during your professional career, you know, when we served together on the city council, but economic development and jobs, and Absolutely. that's a component and, and a place you're, you want to continue to take Centro uh, as well. Absolutely, so we actually partnered with two different organizations, LABO and the Dime Institute. And Most LABO recently, the, the Latin, Latin American, American Business, Business Organization, Organization, which is now an affiliate, an affiliate of the of chamber. The chamber, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, to, to uh, pursue some funding, to do some economic development, some training, um, workforce training, uh, and, uh, and, and we're doing a lot of great work there in that area. Uh, but mostly our organization has, has taken a turn to address a lot of the health concerns of, of the different communities through the programs and services that we provide. So 72% of the revenue that comes from Centro now, it's either behavioral health, direct health care services, our group adult foster care, adult foster care, and a number of other programs that and, we have. And that's really important, right? I mean, we, we all the data and research has shown that uh, you, you can get better health outcomes and results oftentimes when you're providing it and, and culturally competent lang you know, uh, languages, outreach and engagement. And so that's why it makes sense for the state, other agencies to be partnering uh, who may not have the expertise, the cultural competency to, to help provide some of those services and engage and, and, and help uh, provide that care. Yep, absolutely. There's been a lot of research that has proven that uh, the, the closer to the community, the services that are provided, and the more culturally and linguistically competent the institutional organization is that is delivering these services, the better outcomes you have. And so we've, we've taken the opportunity to partner with a number of organizations, with the state DPH, with um, a number of other institutions in MassHealth, 
and we're we're doing that to the best that we can and we continue to grow and um, soon ho hopefully we'll have an announcement uh, that has to do with our our growth and our expansion in terms of the array of services that we provide right. and um, y your service region more or less Central Mass is, is the core of where we provide our services, but we have now clients in 52 cities and towns across the Commonwealth. We have people that we serve that are from the Boston area, from the Lawrence, Lowell area, from the Springfield mm -hmm. area. Um, but the core of the, the, the majority of the people that we serve are, you know, Marlboro West. So. And, and for, you know, 50 years, you know, more or less, uh, an anchor uh, in the Maine South neighborhood and continue to be on, on Sycamore Street, mm -hmm. which is kind of the headquarters of the operations. That's right. We moved there in 1979 after uh, the building that we were at. Uh, literally, the, the bell tower collapsed. Uh, Father Bafaro used to tell the stories, God rest his soul, uh, of, of, of kids that were leaving the building because it was the end of the, of the day and the bell tower coming down. And so with his connections uh, with the Catholic Church, we were able to get into the building that at the time, <clears throat> excuse me, was owned by Catholic Charities. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been there ever since. That was in 1979. So we, and uh, as an organization, we were started in 1977. So that's 45 and a half years and we keep ticking and that's right. we're like the right. Timex. <laughs> But you know, it, it's important you know to, to be where people are at and have those those institutions that can provide the services and, and build community and, and and that's what you're doing. Uh, one of the one of the events that uh, Centro has really gotten uh, to, to one of the events that's allowed Centro to kind of get the word out about the services that they provide, but also kind of celebrate the Latino culture, which has grown and become more, more diverse, is coming up and. The 30th anniversary uh, of, of the Latin American Festival. Why don't you talk about that and what, yeah. what you have planned? So in 1991, it was started for the very first time. It was actually an experiment that in 1990 was uh, produced at Institute Park by a number of community leaders. But then in 1991, Centro took over um, and it's the Latin American Festival. We actually have grown to the point where now the city of Worcester considers it a signature event. It's cert certainly a signature event for us. We attract people from all over New England as well as New York and other, and other states to come to visit uh, and participate of this one day event. It used to be a three day event, but you know, the economy is right. what it is. And so uh, we do our very best to pack a full day from 12 to nine uh, with a lot of stuff. And I don't want, I, I'd be remiss if I did not thank in advance the police department for the great work they do right. every year. Um, whenever we've had the event, w the police department, the, the, the folks that have engaged in, in, our, in our detail have, have a tremendous tact for de-escalating things. Um, they can see, they are there, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and we're, we're forever thankful, and, and, and I just can't say yeah, enough it's about Yeah, it's a great family event. I mean, you've got great music, there's food uh, vendors, uh, uh, you know, uh, there. There's uh, booths with people selling, you know, goods and wares and, yep. and crafts. So, uh, yeah. a, a good event uh, with the city involved and partnering with it. Absolutely. And a first this year. Uh, let's see what's that. We we have a Latino city manager. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. Right, right. That's so right. so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so something to celebrate uh, as well. And and Absolutely. both uh, the acting city manager Eric Batista's story and and your story uh, yeah. are also are about kind of the the, the history of Worcester. Uh, yeah. the, of immigration, of families, uh, you know, coming, contributing, yeah. and uh, yeah. and and building things. Yeah, it's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time for Worcester. We we see the growth. Uh, we see the um, uh, a lot of what is happening in our community, and we just want to continue to work to make sure that everybody benefits from the growth and development. But but it's exciting. Yeah. You know, we, I think. Uh, the, bo gone are the days where it used to, where Worcester people used to lament that they were not from Boston or from yeah, New yeah. York or whatever. Worcester is Worcester and we're yep. proud of it and we're excited. About and a big part of that momentum, you know, is kind of the diversity of the city. So, yep. so August 20th, Saturday at beginning at noon, beginning at noon, beginning at noon till nine behind city hall admission is free. And 
I'm sure there may be still opportunities for booths and vendors. If uh, yeah. probably the deadline is close, right? Yeah. Interestingly enough, if I sell one more booth, my uh, the, our our vice president of operations is going to kill us. We, we're really packed this year. Oh, we're good. really thankful to all of the sponsors. I can't name them all. There are far right. too many, but. We are very thankful. Without them, it wouldn't happen. And we want to welcome the the entire community as 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 they come every year to continue to keep coming, because this is for all of us. Got it. Got it. Well, Dr. Juan Gomez, President and CEO of Central Wine, thanks for being with us. Thank you very Good much. Stuff. All, right. all right. And stay with us for our next segment of Chamber Exchange, a TV show. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential. This is Radio Worcester. Local talk, local news, local events. We got it, and we've got opinions that you're going to want to hear. That Worcester will be thought of and spoken about. We're live every morning, 6 to 10 a.m., and if you can't catch us then, you can find us online day and night at RadioWorcester.com. This is your town. This is your morning show. Talk of the Commonwealth with Hank and Ben.